off all their clothes because at this point nudity is a, is a little not real important when we're saving a life. Uh, throw out everything not, not necessary in the boat. We bail for so many hours. I've heard hundreds of suggestions. If I had said to you, save everybody in the boat. But I didn't say that. I said, who are you going to throw out of the lifeboat? And so your mind went right over here. Just like a salesman says, do you want it on your Visa or your MasterCard? He gave you a choice, didn't he? Is no one of the choices? Never. And everybody I know, including me, has bought at least one thing I didn't want because I answered the question and was three minutes further in the conversation before I realized, you know, I really did want to say no. But now I'm too embarrassed to go back and say no because I don't want him to think that I'm a schmuck. And we all do that. It's the same technique that salesmen use all the time. Would you like a red car or a blue car? Do you want that in 10 days or 30 days? You always get a choice, but I control the universe of choices. That's how various clarification works. If I control the universe of choices, I can mold someone's behavior. And they always think that they thought it up by themselves because they didn't realize that I controlled the box. That's why values clarification is wrong because it makes the child think that they made up their own mind when they really didn't because I gave them some very concrete guidelines inside of which they had to make up their mind. And it's a very valid way of changing a behavior. This is called the Bettendorf survey. We found it in Iowa. It was used this year. Why is Iowa important? Remember, all the goals in all the states are the same. And we have validated programs that are the same over the whole country. This is the Bettendorf survey. It goes with understanding and appreciating others. Can, are you male or female? What year are you? This is given to high school students. Do you regard yourself as a bigot? Do you think homosexuality is a problem society must deal with as strictly as possible? Do you think people are born homosexual or do you think they choose to be homosexual? Do you think the United States was stolen from Native Americans or do you think it was rightfully colonized by Europeans? Then we have the nationality and religion list. Which of the above do you think is responsible for the decline of the United States economy? Which of the above do you think is more susceptible to alcoholism? Which of the above do you think is the most likely to raise a large family, eight or more children? Which of the above are you most likely to assume does not speak fluent English? Which of the above do you think is the most likely to have an income of over 50,000? Which of the above do you think would be most likely to eliminate an entire race? Who has most influenced the way you feel about other races? With whose influence have you most strongly disagreed? If you could eliminate an entire race, would you? Which one? Through the New American Schools Development Corporation met. I told you there were 486 grants given to them. On July 9th, they gave a list of the places that got the money, and they gave out 11 grants. Now, I've been telling you that the grants are the same, and I've been telling you that this is talking about who owns the children, and that, in this case, business and the state think they do, and we need to start saying we do. What kind of programs got the money? This is the Connect School, a design for 21st century schools, Massachusetts. It's for K through 12 inner city children. The curriculum will be radically transformed. Portfolios, products, and performance assessment techniques will focus not just on subject matter, but on their abilities, dispositions, and attitudes critical for life and work. That's this one is in Minnesota. It's called the Community Learning Centers of Minnesota. Social service agencies will offer needed services on site at the school, integrating services with education. Teachers will retain, retain their school charter only so long as state learning goals are met. Many times as I've, as I've traveled and, and talked to people about what's happening in Pennsylvania education and why parents need to get involved, I get told, well, you see, it doesn't matter to me because my children don't go to the public school. My children are in parochial school, they're in Christian school, they're in private school, I homeschool. Simultaneously with the new regulation changes, teacher certification is changing. And in order to be certified, teachers will have to demonstrate that they are competent in outcome-based education and that they, that's what the colleges will teach, that's what the teachers will learn. Non-public schools have to have certified teachers too. Accreditation is, is rolling over, away from traditional accreditation into outcome accreditation. Non-public schools get accredited because it does better for you if you're going to college if you graduated from an accredited high school. In outcome accreditation, in order to get it, you must give the, the accrediting board five goals. 
three academic, two attitudinal, and you must demonstrate to them that you have tracked the, the change in behavior or attitude in the individual student over time. Doesn't matter whether you're public or non-public. The assessment technique in the new regulations are what's called portfolio assessments. People think portfolio means a portfolio. I have an art portfolio, I have a science portfolio, pieces of paper. It is an electronic portfolio, much like the one we looked at in the work links. So that no matter where the child goes, whether you change schools or whether you don't, the portfolio will follow you. Please do not think that because your children are not in a public school that you are home free. You are not. The state cannot afford to let a huge bunch of children slip through the cracks because it will be obvious then who can read and who can't. And one of the things that happens with outcome-based education is, you know, we talked about what happens with all the kids. Achievement goes down. Now that doesn't show up because everybody gets an A may take you four years to get your A, but you're going to get an A. In the, in the testimony in front of the House Education Committee, we um, asked, through representatives, we asked Mr. Fear, well, what are the state standards in math and reading going to be? I mean, the, the student learning outcomes say you have to be able to use a calculator. They don't say you have to be able to do it without one. The communications learning outcomes don't say literate to an eighth grade level. They don't say literate to any level. So what are the standards? And Mr. Pierce said, well, every district will decide on their own. Well, that's absurd. Philadelphia, which has some rather interesting reputations in education in the state, like terrible, will say, well, if you can count to 10, you get a diploma, because then we won't have any dropouts, see? That brings our statistic right up. And Mount Lebanon in Pittsburgh, a very affluent, wealthy district, will say, you have to be able to do calculus. We can't have that. You can't have 501 different diplomas in the state of Pennsylvania. That would be ludicrous. So there has to be standards somewhere. Where are they? They won't tell us. The state says this is all local control, local decisions. But if you read the regulations, the regulations say that every district must develop a strategic plan based on the state assessment, which is the EQA revisited, based on the state assessment that they must use to drive their curriculum. They also say that every district must include a local district assessment, a diagnostic assessment, to indicate how every child is doing in meeting each of the exit outcomes. Now, I want you to think about an assessment. Assessment is not easy. When you do an assessment, the test really means nothing. It's just a piece of paper with a bunch of stuff written on it. What's important is what do I want you to know. What am I testing and how am I going to score it? And does this piece of paper accurately measure the behavior I want you to show me? Is it an accurate measurement? In order to do that, I must first define the behavior and then I must validate the test and then I must see if it's reliable and am I going to get the same numbers over different student populations over time. That's expensive. I have to do research to see what kind of instruments and how do I score it and how do I set standards. Our districts can't afford that. So what do they do? Oh, well, see, the regulations say the state will give technical assistance to all the districts to help them with their diagnostic assessments. This year, when we gave the state assessment system that everybody member complained about, one of the things that happened in there was that the state changed testing companies away from the company that did the old TELS test into a company called Advanced Systems. And one of the reasons that they changed to Advanced Systems was because Advanced Systems is an expert in portfolio assessment. Now, if every district couldn't do their own, why does the state care? Every district can't afford to do their own. The state is going to control it. The state is going to set the criteria. So the districts do this diagnostic assessment that the state's really going to do for them. Then the districts have to justify all their courses against the exit outcomes that the state mandates. They can't move away from those. That's the latter. Everything is aimed at those exit outcomes, those goals that we talked about in behavior and attitudes and skills. Everything is aimed there. And everything the district does, teacher preparation, coursework, um, any money that they spend, what they put in their library, has to be aimed at 
making sure that every kid hits those exit out.